<coughs> Hi, I'm Underbelly, and you suck at producing. Sex, it's not for you. But there are things we can learn from sex that could help us with what really matters. Producing. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how sex could really help us out with deciding who should be on top, the kick or the bass. Let's get started. Okay, so check it. A common concern in the bedroom prior to coitus is the question of who will be on top. Now, luckily, this is a decision you'll never have to make because look at you, but it's something you'll have to be faced with when it comes to the kick and bass in your tracks. Because the low frequency range in music is so limited, it's common for the kick and bass to overlap, creating a bloated, disgusting mess, like sex. That's why in today's lesson, we're going to learn how to separate the kick and bass, so each has a comfortable role in the bedroom. Let's get started. Okay, so check it. You'll notice I have two tracks here, one with the drums and one with that booty bass. Let's go ahead and listen. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so that's pretty swagging, dude. Let's go ahead and solo out the kick on a drum track and just really pay attention to the interplay of the kick drum and the bass. Let's hear it. Okay, so you'll notice that the kick is quite subby. And um, it seems to kind of already be clashing with that booty bass. But we can go ahead and just verify this by adding an EQ8 on the kick drum. And we're going to go ahead and click that little triangle up there. And wowzers, we all of a sudden have a full view of the frequency spectrum of that kick. So we're going to play the kick and the bass again. And we're just going to see where the kick is most resonating. What, where is it really giving it to us in the bedroom? So let's go ahead and listen. All right. And if we just drag our mouse over to that protrusion right there, that big protrusion, just oof, it's quite large. Uh, you'll notice that we're really peaking around 55 hertz on that kick with a slightly lower, more chode-like overtone at around 120 hertz, okay? And so let's go ahead and do the same thing with the bass. Uh, let's add an EQ8. Click that little triangle to give us the full view and, and just see where the, the booty bass is peaking. All right. So, okay, let's just hover our cursor kind of over that lower note. And you'll notice, once again, it's really protruding around 55 hertz, and we can't have that. They're both clashing over the same role in the bedroom. They're both too dominant, and it's just not working. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to decide who gets to be on top. And that booty bass, I mean, it's really holding down those sub frequencies. So I think the kick should be on top. It's more masculine. It's, you know, pumping really, you know, just thrusting away. And, but we need to kind of tame some of the lower frequencies of the kick and, and, and get rid of those bottom tendencies. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our kick and we're gonna go to our EQ and we're going to introduce a low cut by just changing the filter type on that first point there. We're going to introduce a low cut and we're going to slowly raise it till we get rid of those frequencies that are really getting in the way of that bass. So let's play the track and slowly raise that cutoff point, get rid of those frequencies. All right. Let's raise it and just kind of neuter the kick. We're trying to neuter just constantly thrusting our faces. And okay, so that seems to be the point at which the kick is not really clashing with the, the bass anymore. But here's the thing, once we got rid of 
that sub and the kick, it, it turned out it's just all it has. It's a one trick pony in the bedroom. And you know, that's not really doing it for us. I think we're gonna have to swap partners. Uh, just dump this ass. And uh, we're gonna introduce a new kick. We just met them on Tinder. Uh, they seem to have a really nice personality. Uh, just look at those curves. And uh, we're gonna just play that new kick with the bass and uh, see how it sounds. Oh, oh my gosh. Ooh. Mm. Okay. Uh, sorry, I was getting a little carried away there. Um, this new kick is just, it's got so much personality. It's got a lot of high end in addition to that bass. And I think it's really a, a good fit for us. You know, not too needy, uh, you know, likes you know, wine and tapas. And unfortunately though, we're still going to have to, you know, kind of carve it to our needs. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing we did with the previous kick. We're gonna lower that frequency cutoff point and just get rid of that protrusion around 55 Hertz. So let's raise the frequency there. You know, talk down to it a little bit, put it in its place. It likes that. And wowzers, you'll notice that because the kick has so much personality, it's a really multifaceted individual, even though we got rid of those sub frequencies, you know, it's still really punching through. It's really giving it to us. And I think it's, you know, the right fit for the track. Let's hear it with the rest of, of the members. Ooh. <clears throat> Okay, just made a little mess. Um, okay, so check it. In today's lesson, we learned how sex could really help us out with our producing. If you'd like to know more, consider signing up for some private online music production lessons with me, Underbelly. Just click the link in the description below. I'm Underbelly, signing off.